this morning, and I told Miss Ollie, don't, don't ask me, don't talk to me this afternoon. My, I got to, my voice has got to heal because I got to preach tonight, but uh, I'll be uh, chug-a-lugging some water to try to keep it smooth feeling anyway. But uh, yeah, I, I always appreciate the opportunity to help you out, and uh, Lord knows you've helped me enough, and I appreciate that so much. Um, I've had difficult times in my life, but uh, I'm, I'm glad for that because the good times feel really good, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they feel really good. Uh, I resigned my job Friday, and um, I'm going to start a new job on the 21st, and it's a job that I have, I, I've never had one like it. And the man said, we're going to need you to come in early. He said, what time do you usually go to work? I said, 4.30, and sometimes 1.30. And he said, well, I don't need you till 7.30, so you can come in late. But uh, he said, how many hours you want to work a day? I said, I don't know, just uh, want to work in the mornings, have the afternoon off. He said, you got it. How many days do you want to work a week? I, I don't know, four or five? He said, why don't we just put you down for five? If you want to cut back to four, you can cut back to four. I never had a job like that. He said, all I want is at the Toyota place in Rocky Mount. He said, all I want you to do is greet the customers that come up in the lot, find out what they need, get their license number, uh, get them comfortable, drive their car back to the shop. If they want to go to Walmart, carry to Walmart. If there ain't no customers coming in, sit down and drink some coffee. I thought, I never had a job like that. You know, and uh, I'm excited about it because I'm, I'm I won't be working any more five day, sixteen hour days. You know, and uh, and I'll have a little bit of time to do my church work as well. And I thank God for that. Okay, but uh, but it feels good. <laughs> it feels good. Okay, Ephesians chapter six. I want to read verse ten. And I guess I could go ahead and read some more verses as well, but I'm going to focus on verse 10. And you're familiar with the verses that follow anyway. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And uh, again, you're familiar with the verses that follow about the armor of God. We're not going to get into that, uh, at least not a whole lot tonight. Uh, we're just going to focus on the power of God and strengthening your faith in God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, if you don't mind. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, again, thy children come before thee. Father, we have eager hearts looking forward to that new Jerusalem. Lord, when she comes down out of heaven from God, and Lord, we know that our home is there uh, in heaven for sure. We thank you, God, for the precious promises you have given. But Father, until that time comes, we need strength, we need power, we need the ability to, uh, to carry on in a world of darkness and be a light shining so that others may see thy glory and come to know thee. Father, we pray you take this weak earthen vessel tonight. Lord, you'd fill him with your spirit, anoint him, and God, give him that unction from the Holy One. Cast away from him everything that might hinder him from preaching in the power of the Spirit and have thy way, Father, in not only in him but in every heart that listens tonight. May your will be done and may Jesus Christ bring glory to thee. We thank you in his wonderful name. Amen, amen. and amen. There are times when we know that something is important. In fact, when the phone rings, Brother Rex, you probably get this from time to time, when the phone rings at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, we know it's probably going to be important. And uh, it, sometimes it, we're a little nervous about answering the phone that time of night because we don't know what bad has happened. You know, when the telephone rings early in the morning, someone probably has an emergency and they need you and uh, you don't know what to expect. You know, when the sheriff's department calls, it's not a social call, okay? And so you get a little nervous about that. We know that sometimes when your boss calls after hours, it's probably not a social call either. And so there are some things that are going to be important, and we know by their timing that it's going to be important. And if we were to take those calls lightly, it would be foolish on our part However, many people don't take uh, the, the most important call seriously at all, okay? Because the most important call that anyone can ever get in this life is a call from Almighty God. 
And God calls people today. He called people all through the ages, but He's calling people today to come out of the life of wickedness, to come out of the darkness and walk in the light as He is in the light. In fact, 1 John 1, 7 says, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. And I thank God for that verse, and I thank God for many others like it in the, in the Word of God. But God calls us to a life of separation, to a life of sanctity, to a life of power, walking with Him. Uh, the New Jerusalem is going to be great when we get there, but friends, we got a ways to go, and I don't know how long, uh, but we have a ways to go before we get there, and I, I do, I am on the road, I hope everyone is on the road, but until that day comes, we need strength and power to walk in this world in which we live, because we can't do it in our own power, okay? We will fail miserably. Uh, we can't do that with a weak faith. Our faith must be focused uh, entirely upon Jesus Christ because apart from Him there is no strength, there is no ability in this life to carry on the life that we're supposed to live. So our first point tonight is our power with Christ, okay? Or our power in Christ or Christ's power in us, whichever way you want to word it, okay? We have the power in the name of Jesus. I like that song, okay? We've got the power uh, in the name of the Lord. What's the message God is sending to us tonight? We just read it. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Uh, we all know how powerful God is, and we know how strong He is. Well, we don't really know the limits of it, but we know that He is all-powerful, okay? And, uh, and, of course, we know that He can do anything. He can do uh, anything His heart desires, and He is capable of doing anything that we could imagine, far more than we could ever dream of, okay? God wants us to be strong in the faith because He wants to use His power through you and through me to be able to reach a lost and dying world. He wants us to be able to show others how in times of uncertainty our faith never wavers, okay? Our faith is still strong because we know who holds tomorrow in His hands, okay? We know that whatever happens in this world, boy, I, I, you talked about the election a while ago, I know who I hope and who I think is going to win, but if the other person wins, you can say goodbye to America, you know? And uh, we need strength and power, we're going to need a whole lot then to get through. But I tell you what, friends, I, we can exercise our strength and our power in Christ today, and we can influence that election, believe it or not. We can. God is able to use us to influence uh, uh, the way people will vote and the way people will uh, listen to Him and follow Him, uh, directing them in the voting procedure. And oh, my, I just pray, I pray God that people will listen to the voice of the Lord and not listen to the voice that they hear on television because there are a lot of lies circulating in the television, you know. A lot of lies on the news network and uh, I, I heard uh, the President Trump, uh, might have been last night, night before, uh, you know, he's, somebody said this about me. He said, I never said that. You know, I never said that. It was reported on the, I think it was CNN or something, and he said, I never said that. Never, never said that. A lot of lies Focus on, uh, on this, uh, this, I guess this is like a prize that the world wants to win today, but uh, the unsafe people want to win today. I was thinking on something else this morning. Uh, I was thinking on the Constitution, or not this morning, but this afternoon. On the Constitution, uh, you know, we believe that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, among these is life. Life. That means that little poor little baby that's conceived, he has a right. According to our Constitution, he has a right to life, okay? A right to life. And the lost world doesn't care about that. They don't care about that. But they need to hear, and they need to know where we stand uh, in, the, in the Lord, Okay? God gives us a clear command to be strong in the Lord. How strong is your faith? You know, the Bible said, Jesus himself said that if we had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this uh, sycamine tree, be plucked up and cast into the sea. Do we really have that kind of power within us? 
we don't have it within ourselves, but God is in us and He has the power. Amen. God is in us and He has the power. You could say to this mountain, be plucked up, and of course it would obey us, okay? Uh, and of course the idea of it is that we have an awesome power within us that we have never yet tapped, never exercised. It is there laying dormant, okay? And uh, too many Christians live defeated lives because they don't realize the awesome power we have in the name of Jesus. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me, okay? Can we be strong in the Lord? I think that uh, Cornerstone is a strong church. Can we be stronger in the Lord? Amen. Amen. We absolutely can. We absolutely can, okay? We are no match for Satan, but i tell you something. Satan is no match for our Savior. Uh, he is a defeated foe. He's not going to that new city. We are going, and he's mad about it, and he wants to elect somebody that will uh, be on his side uh, this year. But uh, how do we grow strong uh, in the Lord? We grow strong spiritually in much the way, uh, same way we do physically, okay? Some of you who have practiced a little bit of bodybuilding, my bodybuilding activity was back in my teenage years, and since then it hasn't been much, and my muscles aren't very big anymore. I'm getting too old, you know. But, uh, but the idea of it is when you exercise those muscles, you Tear down those fibers and they grow back stronger than they were before. And your muscle pops out and gets real big, you know, and that's pretty good, you know. But uh, you exercise faith in the same way, okay. Uh, I, don't know how about, uh, I don't know about your life. I experience difficulties from time to time and uh, never lose my faith in God, never lose my, uh, you know, my standing with God. Uh, but sometimes I wonder what to do next. <laughs> I wonder where to go. And I always know that uh, when, I, when I ask God, He's got the answer, okay? He's got the answer. Now, how many of you remember uh, the story of Charles Atlas? You remember that? He was a weakling, okay? And he was, he, he was in the, at the beach one day, and the guys made fun of him because he was so weakly and sickly looking, and he decided he had enough. And he went back home and started lifting weights, and he became, what, the Hercules of his day, you know? He became the, the model for every young man to follow, and everybody, uh, uh, well, at least I did, and some others liked his dynamic tension methods and all of that stuff uh, to build your strength and your body. And, of course, like I said, all of my muscles are covered with a good layer of fat now to keep me warm, but, uh, but at any rate, but he did that, and he became, uh, you know, a model. Nobody messed with him after that. Nobody made fun of him, of him anymore, okay? But the reason Satan beats up on so many of God's people is because they've never exercised their faith. Listen carefully. A faith that is never tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Okay, And so when we go out in this world, God sometimes allows us to go through those difficult times to strengthen our faith. Okay, Strengthen our faith. God never puts us in a situation to destroy us. It's always to make us stronger. Now, I, a couple of weeks ago, I got news that my cousin had died. And uh, he was 61 years old. Uh, he lived next door to me when I was growing up. And uh, his daddy's name was Podner. I preached Uncle Podner's funeral. And I thought they were going to call me to uh, preach Little Podner's funeral, but they didn't. And uh, they, they didn't have a funeral. They elected to uh, just have a gathering at the family, at the house. And so that's where I went and I did that. But, uh, but at any rate, uh, my aunt, his mother, Uncle Podner's wife, his mother is so distraught. In fact, she's in the hospital right now. She said, why? She said, she looked at me in, in those eyes of hers, and she said, buddy, you're not supposed to bury your children. They're supposed to bury you. She said, why does God keep me in this world? I'm 85. I'm ready to go. Why does he keep me? Why, why did I have to see the death of my son? And I say, hey, Mildred, you are here. Because God knows that we need you. We need you. You're the matriarch of the family. You're, you're the oldest surviving member of the family. We need you here. She said, well, I'm ready to go. I said, I know you are, Aunt Mildred. But just hang on. Our time will come. Our time will come. And uh, 
these things that hurt us so badly. It does not mean that God is against us. It means that he's got something for us to learn, something, something for us to grow through, okay? Something for us to become stronger in, something to cause our faith to, uh, to grow in him, okay? God has more for us than we can imagine. Think about it. He told us, oh, he told the parable, you know, he, he gave to his servants five pounds, ten pounds, one pound, and he said, occupy till I come. You know what the word occupy I means? It's the root of the word occupation, <laughs> okay? He said, labor till I come, all right? Uh, carry on the king's business until I come. And when you think about that, and you really meditate on that and think about it, that's an awesome thing, to carry on the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in his absence. That, that'll blow your mind. And you say, well, I am unable. I can't do the work of God. I can't either, friends, and Brother Rex can't either. The only way we can do anything is by the power of Jesus Christ dwelling in us. The Holy Ghost can give us the power at any time to carry on the work of God that is needed in this world. And when there's a need, like there's a need in our country right now, uh, the people of God ought to rise up and stand and say, I can do all things through Christ because He strengthens me. I don't have it within me. I have Christ in me and He is my power. The reason Satan beats up on so many people, uh, God's people is because they know they're no threat to Him. He knows that they're no threat to him at all, okay? They're spiritual weaklings, so he walks all over them. Many Christians have been that way all their life, and, uh, and so they'll continue to be that way. They've never grown in the Lord, never grown. That's why so many, I've seen it before, some people will come accept Christ, and then they'll fall away, and, uh, and, and you know, they'll, they won't have anything to do with the church. What's wrong? Well, they, got, they, they made a profession of faith. I'm not going to say they got saved. They made a profession of faith, and then the devil turned against them, and they got upset about it, and they said, I don't want this, you know. I don't want this. I've seen it happen before. And my friends, we don't need that. We need to stand and say, Devil, in the name of Jesus, get thou behind me. Thou art an offense unto me. You know, the Bible says that when we resist the devil and draw nigh to God, Satan flees from us. Amen? I like that. <laughs> I like that. The only ones who will change today are those who are willing to grow stronger in the Lord. Those who are willing to strengthen their faith in the Lord. But those people who are unwilling uh, to grow and unwilling to grow stronger in the Lord, they'll remain spiritual babes for the rest of their lives. Okay? Just as we can build physical mo muscles, we can build spiritual strength as well, and we can become strong spiritually. If you're tired of Satan beating up on you, and uh, you know, and you being less capable than you are supposed to be, we need to grow together in the power and in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. And beginning right now, okay, the responsibility of becoming a strong Christian is not God's; it is ours. Okay. God puts it before you and says, take all you want. And we take just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. You have to stop to think about this. The Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the hills too, <laughs> you know. He owns the world, the hills are on. He made it all, okay. The Bible says, now, now science tells us, and I don't know how much to trust science, but science tells us there are like 200 to 400 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy. And they tell us there's between 200 and 400 billion galaxies. And the Bible says God made the stars and calls every one of them by their name. Can you remember that many names? <laughs> I can't even remember mine sometimes, you know. But uh, God is an awesome being. And we have only scratched the surface of getting to know Him, okay? Getting to know him. Uh, did Elijah get to know him with, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think so un until he got to heaven. Did Moses know God as supremely as he could have? I doubt it. But, uh, but he did know God face to face, you know. There are very few, very few people who have known God so intimately that they could say, let it not rain for three and a half years and it wouldn't rain for three. Very few people, you know. Elijah was one of them. 
There are very few people who could say, you know, uh, uh, you know, stretch out a stick and turn the Nile into blood. There are very few people that could do something like that. But those who walk close to God uh, have the power of God permeating through them. You know why the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Because the more of God's word we get into us, the more we get the more we get into the Word of God, the more the Word of God gets into us, and the more we become like Him. I'm preaching the end of my sermon before I get to it, okay? Psalm 84, 11 says, The Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing would He withhold from them that walk up rightly. I like that, okay? Whatever we need, God is more than able to supply, and He can give abundantly. James says, Ask uh, you know, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask, and God will give it abundantly. Yeah, all we need to do is ask. Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. If you ask for a, uh, for a bread, will, will God give you a stone? If you ask for a fish, would He give you a scorpion? I forgot what the other thing was, but He said, ask, seek, and knock, you know. By the way, ask, seek, and knock, A-S-K. Prayer is asking God, you know. A-S-K, ask, seek, and knock, Okay. How many of you remember, Lord, I hate to mention his name now, but uh, Bruce Jenner, when he, when, he ran, when he won the decathlon, remember that? He was a man's man. Now, everybody was, you know, he was a, a hero. And guess what he ate for breakfast? <laughs> I don't know if he did or not, but that's, that's what he said, you know. Uh, and even today, you know, people... They say, well, I'm getting a little tired. And the boss says, well, I guess you didn't eat your Wheaties this morning. You know, I mean, we still use that, that phraseology, uh, you know, as a symbol of being strong, you know. Lord knows what he turned into, I, you know. I, and I ain't even going to preach on that tonight. But, but the idea of it is, you know, we, 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 we set a little thing there and we say, well, Wheaties are going to make me strong, you know. Wheaties are going to make me be able to run like Bruce Jenner, run, you know, run the decathlon, do, do this and do that. And friends, you know, a recent survey showed that you're liable to get more nutrition out of eating the box than you are the Wheaties, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, but the idea of it is, you know, that's the way it was, okay. All of the false promises that can make us strong, the biggest deceivers of all, I think, are... The, the breweries and the, the liquor companies. And, uh, you know, you see these... Uh, I, well, let me just make a confession. I, I, like, I like the Redskins and I like the Panthers and I like the Cowboys. And I, I know that's incompatible, but uh, I ain't going to watch them this year. Uh, anybody who will kneel instead of saluting the flag and honoring... Uh, America, I'm not going to watch them, you know. I'm just not going to watch them. You're welcome to if you want to. I mean, I, I won't hold that against you, but, uh, but I'm not going to watch them anymore. But you ever notice that in the sports, uh, the sports commercials, they advertise beer. I never understood that. I never understood that because you, you, you drink a beer and then go play football, you could probably get run over, you know. Or, or baseball, you're liable to get hit between the eyes with a ball, you know. I, I never understood that. They're deceiving people into think this is what makes you a great sportsman, you know. And it doesn't work that way, friends. I was raised in the home of an alcoholic. And I'll tell you something, I don't want that mess around me. I don't want it because I've seen firsthand what it does, and I don't want it in my life, okay. People have allowed, uh, they've allowed... Advertisement showing young people drinking and having a great time. Truth of the matter is that there's no other product on earth. And I know they're down on cigarettes trying to get them stamped out. But more people have died from alcohol than they have for cigarettes, you know. And the, the reason they don't work on alcohol is because they all drink it, okay. And, and, and that's, that's the reason they don't, okay. But why do they advertise those products in things that are supposed to be healthy, like, you know, athletic kind of things, you know. I don't understand that. They do more harm, I think, uh, with liquor and beer and all that stuff uh, than any dope addict has ever done. Dope peddlers and pushers, and I, I think they do more harm. People die 
every year, you know, they talked about the coronavirus. More people die from alcohol and alcohol-related injuries and wrecks and murders. More people die from those sort of things than they do from coronavirus. And uh, we're not shutting down the, the, the distilleries, are we? We're not wearing a mask. Make people wearing a mask when they go buy a beer, are we? <laughs> I mean, you know. But, uh, but the idea of it is I, th I think something's amiss. I think there's a great conspiracy going on in these last days, and I think the devil is behind it, and I think the devil is behind a lot of the candidates today as well, okay? Uh, you can fire me after I finish, but uh, if you want to fire me now, you can. I'll just leave, but anyway. But uh, the only thing that it does is makes people dumb and stupid, okay? Don't ever drink. Young folks, don't ever drink, Okay? You say, well, I'm just social drinking. I'm at a party. I'm just social drinking. There ain't no such thing as social drinking. It's drinking, okay? It's drinking, all right? And it will lead you downward. It never, ever lifts anybody up. Oh, it'll make you feel good and get over your problems for a few hours, but then you've got to pay for it afterwards, okay? Be strong in the Lord. God can do a whole lot more for you than alcohol can. God can do more for you than dope can. God can do more for you than anything in this world. He is the one who made us. He's the one who can sustain us, okay? Be a real man. Be a strong man. Be strong in the Lord. And none, none of your enemies will be able to stand against you, okay? Remember the time when Elijah, was it Elisha uh, and his servant, was, it, was his name Gehazi? They were in Samaria, and uh, Gehazi was so afraid because of all the Samaritans around him, they thought maybe it was in Syria. i got to read that again. But anyway, uh, he was so afraid because uh, of the armies of the enemies were all around him, and Elisha said, don't be afraid. They're more with us than there are with him. And he, he prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes. And he saw the whole mountain was filled with horses and chariots of fire, the angels of God circling around his people to protect them and carry them through. I want to tell you something. He's still doing that today. He's still doing that today. I believe and I, I hope your pastor believes and I hope you believe and I think your pastor does believe it that there are probably angels in this building right now. And uh, we need to be careful because we entertain angels unawares sometimes. I'm preaching, I guess, five or six different messages tonight. But anyway, bear with me. Be strong in the Lord, okay? Be strong in the Lord. I don't care if you're a strong swimmer, strong runner, a strong whatever it might be. You've got to be strong in the Lord to be able to make it through these last days, okay? So our power in Christ. And secondly, our purpose in Christ. What is our purpose in the Lord Jesus Christ? Occupy till I come, he said. Carry on my business. Work my work while I am gone. Carry on what I began in this world. Now, I want you to know something. We have gone, uh, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has gone just about practically all around this world. There, when, I, when I first started preaching, Brother Fred Baker, missionary to the Philippines, taught a course at the college I was going to, and he said there are 3.8 billion people today who have never heard the name of Jesus. According to the latest statistics that I heard, there are less now than 100 million people who have never heard the gospel. Wow. We've really gotten around the world. And there's still doors that we can't get in, and, uh, and we're still praying about them. We still want to get in and reach them. I don't know if those numbers are right, but uh, anyway, 100 million people have not yet heard the name of Jesus Christ. And we don't, you know, they don't have to hear before Christ comes back for his church in the rapture. Uh, they will hear it uh, eventually, you know, uh, during the Great Tribulation. Uh, they'll hear it from the two witnesses, and there's going to be an angel flying through the midst of heaven preaching the everlasting gospel. This, and a lot of people say, well, that's crazy. No, it's not crazy. The Bible says it, and I believe it, you know. That's what's going to happen. But people will hear the gospel during that time. It'll be the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of the church, but it'll be the gospel of the kingdom. They will hear the gospel during that time. But there's nothing to prevent Jesus Christ from taking us out of this world right now, okay? And your pastor's been teaching you very well on that rapture uh, subject, okay? But a hard, uh, you know, a lot of young folks today, and, and please believe me, you young folks here, 
I'm not complaining about you. I'm not, I'm not, not at all. But there are a whole lot of young folks today that think that the world owes them a living. And they don't want to work. Okay? They don't want to work. Oh, they'll get a job, but they don't want to work. And, you know, and it's, it's difficult for employers sometimes because they hire people and they don't work. They just won't work. And I've seen it where I work. I've seen it in other jobs. People just don't work. But we've raised a generation of folks who don't like, nor they, do they know how to work. Uh, I, I was thinking uh, yesterday, I rode, we've got a pile of dirt at the church, and we're trying to get rid of it. So I went and got some dirt and uh, carried it home and spread it in some low spots in the yard, planted some grass seeds, watered it with the hose. I had a good time yesterday. But, uh, and it hurt my shoulder. <laughs> but... Uh, but I was just thinking, how many young folks have never used a shovel? You know? My daddy made sure I knew how to use a shovel and a hoe and a rake and everything. Uh, my first job was digging graves at the cemetery, okay? Uh, I knew how to use a shovel. But a whole lot of folks today don't know how. In fact, you can, you can ride by the work crews on the road, and they're standing there holding a the shovel. Get to work, shovel, you know? Do something. It won't, it won't work. You know, it just just doesn't work. And uh, who was it? Ken Hovine said he invented a, a shovel. Uh, he said he wanted to. He just wanted one tenth of the money it would save. He invented a shovel that would stand up by itself. <laughs> you know, you don't have to hold it. <laughs> you know, never mind. The hardest work some people do is trying to figure out how to get out of working. You know. If there's, I've been working for over 50 years, I'm tired, <laughs> you know, I've got an easy job coming up and I'm going to take it, okay? If there's something we are able to do, we should be found doing it. Shame on us if we aren't doing it. God sends a strong message to occupy, and the healthiest thing a person can do physically and spiritually is to occupy until Jesus comes, okay? God wants his children to amount to something. My daddy told me, you're going to have to work, boy. I don't know about you, but when I was 14 years old, I got my first job. That was digging graves, okay? I made $20, and I had to give daddy 10 of it for room and board. He said, well, that's cruel. I thought it was, too, you know? And I still despise it right to this day. And even later, when I got a bigger paying job, I had to pay more money room and board. I said, well, daddy, I'm still eating the same amount, you know? Uh, he says, I don't want you to grow up to be a lazy bum. You pay your way. You learn how to survive. And I learned, okay? I learned. I wonder what would happen if there were a total lockdown for a month. I guess some people would starve to death, wouldn't they? I mean, I guess we would, you know? Uh because we don't raise gardens anymore like we used to. We don't raise our own food. We don't raise chickens like we used to. Some people do. But, uh, but just about the vast majority of people would starve, you know. We don't know how to make a living on our own, okay. We all, all we need is a paycheck, you know. That, that doesn't always work, all right. <laughs> but this may not seem to be a very important message right now, but my friends, it's important because times can get tight between now and the rapture. Times can get difficult between now and the rapture. Uh, we need to be strong in faith. And I know God can open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing. God can rain down manna from heaven. God can make sure that as people get fed. David said, I have been young, now I am old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Okay? And God will supply for his people, and I believe that. Okay? 2 Corinthians 5.10, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in this body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or evil. Good or bad, okay? We want to be strong in the Lord. We want to be doing the right things. I don't particularly, I'm not working for rewards. I'm working because I love the Lord. Amen? And uh, if I get a reward for it, fine. It's like uh, when, when I went to, uh, when the deacons interviewed me at the, uh, to be their pastor, they said, well, 
preacher, you know, we, we kind of like to have you, but uh, we're afraid to ask you because we know you're so overqualified. I said, look, listen to this. I said, my degrees, and I got a bunch of them. I got degrees, but I didn't get those degrees just so I could put a prefix in front of my name, doctor, okay? I, I got all those degrees because I learned, I wanted to learn the Bible. The, the degrees were a byproduct. And secondly, I'm not applying for a job. I'm responding to a calling, okay? Uh, so just put all of your fears aside and the fact that I got the degrees, just put them aside and, and uh, you know, if you want me to be your pastor, ask me. Ask me. They said, will you? I said, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right. Okay, our purpose, our power, and then thirdly and finally, our pattern in Christ. John one twenty nine. John the Baptist was preaching and he looked up and he saw Jesus coming and he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Now I know that you and I can't take away anybody's sin, but we can preach the one who can take away the sin of the world. Okay? John was telling us we should focus on Jesus. He said, He must increase, I must decrease. He is more important, I must slide into the background. You've got to focus on Him from now on. Okay? And you've got to become like Him. Like Him. I know we'll be like Him one day, but we've got to try to become like Him in this world as well. How many of you remember the, the show Happy Days? Do you like Happy Days? Who would you like best? Fonzie? Hey. You know? When that show started, young folks all in school were saying, Hey. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, how many of you remember... Evil Knievel. Man, when he started jumping those buses and cars and all that thing, the emergency rooms reported broken bones from young people on bicycles because they were trying to jump things like Evil Knievel was. People patterned their lives after someone who was important to them, okay? I remember after the True Grit came out, John, the John Wayne version way a long time ago, they were doing an interview with Glenn Campbell. And they said, what's it like to work with John Wayne? He said, well, you hang around him a while and you even start talking like him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that's the way we need to be with Jesus. Hang around him long enough so that we start talking like him. Start acting like him. Start living like him. Start being just like Jesus, okay? Did you know that's the meaning of a disciple? That's the meaning of disciple. The word disciple comes from the word that means discipline. And a person who is a disciple of Jesus disciplines themselves so that they become like their master. And Jesus says it is enough that the servant be as his master. But none of us have made it that far yet. We're not just like Jesus yet, okay? Uh, people be, uh, people were, will imitate the ones that they think are important even to the detriment of their lives. And oh, my friends, we need to get that vision of Jesus Christ's purpose and power and pattern in this world and see what we need to be doing today because the time is short. My friends, I'm expecting to hear the trumpet before this sermon's over, you know. I'm expecting to hear the trump, uh, trumpet sound every, any day. And I keep listening. One of these days, I'm going to hear it. Amen? I'm going to hear it. Behold the Lamb of God. He must increase. I must decrease. That's what we call sanctification. He becomes so much in me that you can't see me anymore. That's discipleship. And that's sanctification. Okay? Have I made it? No. I have a long way to go. But I'm working on it. And I hope that you're working on it too. I want you, God says, to be just like my son. And then Jesus said in Hebrews, or Paul said of Jesus, he said, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Isn't that amazing? God, those who will follow him and try to become like him, God is not ashamed, Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brethren. Wow. Big brother, 
the Lord Jesus Christ? That's awesome. That's awesome. What is God saying to you personally today? I want you to be like Jesus. Are you like Jesus? Do you know him? Are you strong in the faith? Is there room for you to grow? My friends, the place to grow, the place to begin growing, is right here at this altar tonight. And the more we come and yield ourselves to him at this altar or any altar we can find, the more we'll become more like him day by day. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for the blessings, for the privilege to stand here among your people, not before them, but among them, and preach your word. Father, I pray it will find lodging in many hearts and give us that vision and desire, Lord, to be like Jesus in this world. What would he be doing in this world today, Lord? That's what we need to be doing today. Father, give us the strength, the power, the courage to stand up and be just like Jesus in this world of darkness. And Lord, though he is not with us in the flesh, he is with us in the spirit. And he lives within his people. Father, make us in your image as we surrender to you by the power of Jesus Christ. Amen.